So Aaron and I are going, <laughs> we have agreed. We are gonna work on this basement together. We're going to give it, literally set a timer, one hour each night until the basement and garage are done. And this is gonna test us, right? Can we do it? Can we do it? Can we work together on this? The thing with spaces like this that are really difficult is number one, when you build the house, there is no system. So you have to create all of the organization systems yourself. And number two, a space like the basement and garage has stuff belonging to me and stuff belonging to Aaron. So figuring out and working together and getting rid of 50, I say, I say 50%. How much of this stuff do you think we need to get rid of? Well, 100% of your stuff and about 25% of mine. <laughs> That's exactly how these conversations usually go. We can get rid of 100% of his, but keep all of mine. He wants to get rid of 100% of mine and keep all but 25% of his. In reality, we both need to get rid of stuff. <coughs> I just started the fire, <laughs> just choking a little. So we're gonna see what we can do together on all of it. He is gonna be in charge of what he keeps and gets rid of that is his area, as with me, but we're gonna work together and I'm gonna help him clean out his area. He's gonna help me clean up and put away stuff in my area. Any project like this has to start with an understanding and a game plan. And honestly, when we walk into spaces like this that we've let get out of control, it really does take a minute to let it sink in, first of all, let the overwhelming surpass, and then just start getting after it. And one of the things I've learned is if you just start with trash, it's easy to make those decisions you know what trash is and you can start getting that out of your space. And if we just did a better job of these recyclables, the different trash, we would be able to keep up on it a whole lot better. And there wouldn't be so many things just stacked that don't even belong where they're at. In just 15 minutes, we started a game plan which was let's just get all the trash start putting like items with like items and we've already just cleared this huge chunk and we still have 45 minutes of work time so let's get after it to be honest it is kind of hard to show spaces like this and to make these sort of videos because it's a very embarrassing but at the end of the day we got it cleaned up and i want to encourage you to do the same all right. Okay, so the potatoes, we just went through and dusted them off. They're still fine. Some of them are getting soft, and so I'll start going through them this week and either blanch and freeze them or can them or something. So this whole area of trash and stuff, Aaron's moving green around for me that I got the buckets. I just haven't done the work in putting them away and then he doesn't want them sitting straight on the concrete. And so he's gonna put them on some styrofoam so that the grains are not like, uh, concrete will wick up moisture and we don't want moisture getting into our grain bags, of course. So, big broad categories is what we're doing. So the grains are going into the long-term storage grain section. Um, and then we're just kind of, I'm going around picking up any trash that I can find. And then Aaron's helping move the stuff that's kind of heavy for me. So let's keep going. In the very first part of this video, it is amazing having the extra help. It's just that motivation to keep going and you kind of work at each other's pace. You saw Cody come down and visit, but anyway, it was so wonderful to have him with me. I know he just keeps saying it throughout the video, but we just keep putting like items with like items, the hunting and fishing and camping, you know, outdoor sort of stuff in one area, all of the Christmas or fall or decorations in another area. And then what we're able to do later 
is really dial in on our specific area. So later in this video, I do some food preservation and that is my area to deal with those grains. And then later when Aaron gets to it, he will deal with some of the fishing and camping. And he did some of that off camera this week as well. Honestly, <laughs> not bad for one hour, both of us down here. Tackle it, keep the morale up, keep a good attitude, laugh, joke, all of that. It really is a test. And so it's a test for you guys at home. Our encouragement is literally set a timer of how long you're gonna work together for and when you're gonna do it, what you're gonna work on, the system you're gonna use. We decided all that beforehand, and I know that that may sound ridiculous to some people, but it's what we're having to do to create this system of organization down here. A lot of the stuff that's down here is because we don't have a shop yet. And then Alaska just hammers you and buries you in snow and makes it incredibly diff difficult to do outside things during the winter and to get a lot of this tackled. So, but I think if we work together, set the timer, it really worked well today. I'm in good spirits, he's in good spirits. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Welcome back, day two. This is how we look today. Aaron's already getting the fire going. It's been like really nice, like upper 20s. <laughs> <laughs> which is warm. It hit almost oh, 40 the other day, right? 45 yesterday. Oh my gosh. It's melting. It's melting. Yes. And so we haven't been running the basement fire butt at night. So one fire a day, which is saving us wood. These have to go down here for now until we get to the garage, right? Yeah. Those are brand new tires for my truck. They have winter studded tires on. And then these are Cody's summer tires. She also has studded tires on. So that is something that has to get stored. Studded tires. She does have a set of tires. Currently the ones on it are studded. Correct. What's wrong with him? Some ladders that need to go. And this, the heck Aaron? Why? Why is that in our basement? Because I, I threatened Caleb I was going to bury it in the snow drift and he did it down here. <laughs> Why did he take it out of the garage? So I could put my Argo in there. Nice. And he could work on his snow machine. Okay. So I told him when I took this out, I was going to go jump it right to a snow drift and leave it. Yeah, that wasn't true. Anyway, so this is where we're starting what? today. I wouldn't do that. Aaron's about to take all the trash to the dumpster with the tractor <laughs> let's face it he just likes to play with that and then let's see how far we can get today day two one hour one hour because that's You're pretty much our off, limit I'm right 45 minutes. that's our pretty much our limit our work together on cleaning things out limit is one hour so set yourself a timer let's get going
what you can't really see is it's melting and causing ice by the front door or the back door here, which is not safe. So Aaron's just cleaning that up really quick before he takes the trash to the dumpster. And then we'll be ready to go. started so there is so much cardboard and styrofoam and stuff in this it just doesn't pack right in the front of the trailer so Aaron's just gonna tie this onto the trailer and haul it up by the time we got all of that done we were pretty much kind of out of Broad category, so Aaron helped me move some stuff into this other area, and we were done for this second night. Okay, so to finish what we've started in the garage today, I'm just going to work on my food prep area. All of these Azure bags are going to get stored properly, and that will be the ending of the video. And then what Aaron and I have realized, and I'll show you, because I'm planning on, you know, sweeping and cleaning up this whole chunk, like this half side. Because there is no food prep in the garage, we know we can finish out this side of the, the basement. What is then happening is in big broad categories, we have tools, we have hunting stuff, we have fishing stuff, camping, keepsakes, Christmas, you name it. And those areas need to be micro organized. It doesn't do us a whole lot of good to micro organize the hunting stuff if we haven't yet collected all of the hunting stuff into one area. So for the next project is we have to go and do the garage. The reason both of these jobs have to be done is in order to get steps down to the basement, both of these areas have to be cleaned out so that we can work to put the steps and then we'll have access from the house upstairs into our basement. So the other point of trying to finish this out today, I have some stuff I have to do tomorrow. Um, and then Aaron and I are trying not to work on these projects on the weekend. We want to live our Alaska life. We want to go fishing. We want to go exploring. We want to do all of these things in the great outdoors and enjoy ourselves a little bit more than we have since we've moved here. And in order to do that, we have to kind of schedule or have a way to do these projects and then also have that time to do those things. So that's why kind of in a nutshell, you've been watching us work on the basement for just one hour each day. So regardless of hours, this is my project for today. I've already done the laundry, made the bed, the kitchen's done. The upstairs is just good to go for today so I can devote whatever time it takes to get all of this packaged and put away. For those of you that are wondering why we keep some of this in our basement and some of it obviously should go into the garage. However, we don't have a shop and so we have limited space in the garage. And then the kennel is for Roberto and then all of the wooden craziness that you see attached to that is because he will tear out of anything like we've had to repair it so many times but before I deal with the food I would like the space to be really clean that I'm working in and so I did bleach and clean the floors get everything put back together in this general area of the basement and then I can move on to doing my food prep. What you're gonna see me do is just do a bunch of packaging. I might not leave too much of this time lapse. I have other videos where I'm doing the basement storage down here originally, and I have a great working system, and I'll link that in the description box. What you are gonna see me do, what I store is in my upstairs working pantry, this would be my overflow pantry, I just misspoke, is this size half gallon jar. 
So all of the things that I package up in the Mylar, we're gonna use this Avid Armor. This is a chamber vac sealer and it will seal Mylar bags. And when we seal the Mylar bags, what I want to happen is when I open the Mylar bag that it completely fills one jar this size. And this jar will last me, depending on what it is. Uh, if it's white rice, it's stored much larger, like in two gallon buckets. But if it's say navy beans that we eat occasionally, but not every single week, it gets stored in this size. And that way I can pull one or two cups out of here, use it several times. And then this is exactly what's in my pantry. My thought process behind that is I used to just fill the Mylar bags to capacity. And yes, that would save me in the long run dollar wise on Mylar bags. What I don't want happening is I open the Mylar bag. It doesn't go into the container that's upstairs, this size storage container. And then now I just have stuff floating around. Our problem is stuff floating around, <laughs> stuff not being put away properly not finishing tasks completely um, because there isn't a system for what do I do with this much left in the Mylar bag. So what you'll see me do is just divvy up enough of these different beans or whatever that they would fit in this. When you package dry beans or rice or things like this, they say it has a 30 year shelf life. So we obviously don't have 30 years worth of food in our basement. However, I do write what is in the item or in the bag and then the date and the year. All right, let me show you the next thing. <clears throat> it has taken forever for me to collect the supplies for this. So I got all of these grains a while back. They've trickled in, trickled in. Some come from uh, Amazon, but mostly I get all of my grains from Azure. I can leave an Azure link with a code uh, for myself. If you use my code, I get $25. And then once you sign up for Azure, you get the ex an exact same sort of code and you can share it with your friends and family, basically not like a sponsored deal. But I got all these grains. And then I had no way if I opened all of these bags, what was I going to do then? At a local bakery, I was able to get these five gallon buckets. They used to have honey in them. They've been washed. Um, and then we had to wait because this is how the system in my upstairs pantry of bigger bulk items that don't go in the half gallon jars go in two gallon buckets. And these are easier for me to move around. They last a bit longer than the half gallon and then they're easier for me to come down to the basement to refill, so on. So you and I washed these together. Then something that was back ordered for an entire month was these bucket liners. I do like to line all of my buckets with a food grade BPA free uh, bucket liner. Might not always be possible, but a couple of things that it helps with is once you snap this lid on, if you go to pour things out of this bucket, it just gets trapped under this sealed kind of gasket lid. And then you can have issues like mold and other growth. So I like anything that's kind of free floating like that to be in a bag. And then if the bag gets really bad, I can just toss the bag and start over. So what I have left down here to deal with for this video is that pile of grains, these grains. And once I get all of that set and done, I can actually just sweep and mop and keep going as best as I can and then close out. So we're drawing to the end, but this is how I'm going to do the grain.
So this one is einkorn. It has become our favorite grain uh, to grind and to make breads and stuff. We're currently on, here I'll move you. I hope that's better. So we're currently on an eating plan. It's not actually a diet. So you're not counting calories or whatever. You're just eating whole foods for 30 days. So we're not doing any bread right now. So I haven't been making bread, but when we get back to grinding and making our own bread, einkorn has quickly become a favorite around here. So. is 25 pounds. I do save these paper bags. I don't throw them in the trash. Um, I use them as fire starter. The Asher brown paper bags are probably one of the best fire starters. And then it's not just filling our dumpster and going to the landfill. the lid before I finish filling this and I have to do it I can reach with a floor hammer so this is for like um, like your laminate flooring so don't use like a metal hammer on this lid you'll break them okay so I'm gonna get more in here And then the best part of these gamma lids is they just screw down, making it so easy to access what is in each one of these buckets. And then I'm out of labels. I'm just gonna half label and write on it a date and what's in the contents. Now these came with a lid that also is going to have a seal on it and it's going to seal a lot more like a paint lid. I would love to have all gamma seal lids. They're hard to come by up here a lot of times and these came for free with this and then I can just pop them off. This actually took me ridiculously long amount of time. I just had no idea how much I had. It isn't uncommon that an area like this would take you a long time and then deciding back and forth between what kind of grain it was. So this is polenta. I don't want a five gallon of polenta. So I went ahead and moved that to mylar bags and so on, but just put on some music, watch some videos and work away. Aaron did get home and he helped me for about an hour in the basement as I finished up the grains. He helped me move some stuff and then we swept and mopped and here is the before and after. So to start out with just a few short days ago, what has been happening with the injury, being sick, having the kids drag stuff to the basement and then not having anywhere to put stuff, there was just crap, if we can be honest, everywhere. My Christmas stuff was not where it goes. We were completely out of wood on this day. Uh, Wyatt took care of that for us, but it was just such a disaster to start out with. And the current finish, Aaron even spent time figuring out how to build the stairs 
on this evening. Everything in this wagon goes to the upstairs pantry, my vacuum, so on. But now I can actually walk all the way around the basement, whereas the other day I couldn't. The dog area, they have a new rug in there. They have their bowls. We will be able to use that when we're headed out for longer periods of time. We circle around the basement. We still have stuff down here that obviously doesn't belong. However, as we get going on the garage this next week, we will be able to adjust and move other things to the basement, maybe keepsakes or longer term things. And then everything in this center is leaving the basement 100%, whether it goes in the trash or it goes someplace else. All that's in that middle has to leave. How do I think those of you that have stuck around to the end, you are so, so greatly appreciated. If you liked this video and you would like to see more as we build our homestead, we food prep, we do all of those different things, hit that subscribe button. When you ring the bell, you get notifications and you won't miss anything that we're doing. When you give us comments and thumbs up, those things help our channel to grow. We look forward to seeing you in the next video. And until then, be blessed, find something to be grateful for, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.